Hello, grade 10 learners. It's me, Sir Ariel, your companion in today's wonderful Sci Venture. Are you ready for today's learning journey? Great! So buckle up and get ready to laugh. Dahil sa Balenzuela Live, ang pag-aaral ng siyensya ay masaya. In today's learning activity, we will apply the principles of conservation of mass to chemical reactions. From the time we get up in the morning to the time we sleep at night, chemical changes are taking place within us and outside. Plants grow through photosynthesis, foods that we eat are digested by the body, metals corrode, raw materials are being converted into new products. New vaccines are being developed and many more versatile and cost-effective materials are being made. A chemical reaction happens in every day life and it occurs everywhere on earth. But how do we know when a chemical reaction took place? Let's find out. There are certain things that will help us identify if a chemical reaction has taken place. We call this evidences of chemical reactions. What are the different evidence of chemical reactions? First, we have the production of light. Second, we have the evolution of gas. Next is the temperature change. Number four, it is the change in color and odor. And lastly, the formation of precipitate. Are you ready to look for these evidences? Look, try to identify the evidences of chemical reaction in each picture. Write your answer on your notebook. You have 15 seconds to answer. Ready? Go! All right, time is up. For the first picture, what is the evidence of chemical reaction present? You got it. The answer is evolution of gas. How about the second picture? The evidence of chemical reaction present? Correct. The answer is change in color and change in taste. Great job, learners. Try to observe your surroundings. What are the different evidences of chemi chemical reaction you can see? A chemical reaction happens every day, everywhere. But what is chemical reaction? A chemical reaction is a process in which two or more substances react with one another to form one or more new substances. Restarting materials in chemical reactions are called reactants, while the substance formed after the chemical reactions are called products. An example of chemical reaction is baking. The ingredients like flour, sugar, and milk are the reactants, and a yummy cake is the product. Chemical reaction is represented by a chemical equation. A chemical equation provides information about the elements and the number of molecules that are reacting as well as what is produced in a chemical reaction. This is an example of chemical equation. We have hydrogen atoms reacted with oxygen atoms to form water molecules. The plus sign shows the combination of the reactants. In this example, hydrogen and oxygen are the reactants of the chemical reaction. 
the subscript tells that two hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms reacted while the symbol small letter g indicates that the state of matter like solid liquid gas or aqueous the arrow sign direct the product of the reaction which is water molecule always remember a chemical reaction follows the law of conservation of mass what is this law all about The law of conservation of mass stated that mass is conserved in a chemical reaction. No new atoms are created and destroyed. There was only grouping and regrouping of atoms. So remember, in a chemical reaction, the total mass of the reactants is always equal to the mass of the product. Now, Let's check if this chemical reaction follows the law of conservation of mass. We will get the molar mass of hydrogen, the oxygen, and the water molecules. To get the molar mass, multiply the atomic mass by the coefficient. The atomic masses of elements are can be found in the periodic table of elements. The coefficient of hydrogen is 2, meaning there are two hydrogen atoms. And the atomic weight of hydrogen atom is 1 gram per mole. To get a smaller mass, we multiply the coefficient 2 by the atomic mass 1 gram per mole. What is the answer? Yes, you are correct. The answer is 2 grams per mole. Now, can you help me compute for the molar mass of oxygen? Great. I will give you 15 seconds and your timer starts now. All right, time is up. Let's check your work. The coefficient of oxygen atom is 2. And its atomic mass is 16 grams per mole. To get the molar mass of oxygen, we multiply the coefficient by the atomic mass. So, 2 times 16 grams per mole is equivalent to 32 grams per mole. Did you get the correct answer? Very good. Now, let's get the total mass of the reactants. 2 grams per mole plus 32 grams per mole is equal to 34 grams per mole. Now, can you compute for the molar mass of the water molecules? I will give you 30 seconds. Ready? Time is up. Let's check your work. For water molecule, we have two hydrogen and one oxygen. To multiply it by the atomic mass of hydrogen atom, which is one gram per mole, plus one oxygen atom multiplied by its atomic mass, 16 grams per mole. And so, molar mass of water molecule is. 18 grams per mole. Look, 
the total mass of the reactants is 36 gram per mole while the mass of the product is 18 grams per mole i stand corrected look the total mass of the reactant is 34 grams per mole while the mass of the product is 18 grams per mole does this chemical reaction follows the law of conservation of mass oh no oh no oh no 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 it does not follow the law of conservation of mass the total mass of the reactants are not equal to the mass of the product what are we going to do we need to balance the equation look we got a message let's read oh this is my friend blippy hello Sir Ariel, I have heard you are having a problem about unbalanced chemical reaction. Don't worry, I have sent steps on how to balance chemical reaction. I hope it will help you and your students in your class today. Thank you. Wow, that's great. Now let's balance this equation. Here are the steps in balancing chemical equation. First, Create a table and list down all the elements on the reactant side and the elements of the compound on the product side. Count the number of atoms that is present in each element by simply looking at the subscript. No, an element without a subscript automatically means that the element has only one atom. In this chemical reaction, the elements found in the reactants are two hydrogen and two oxygen atoms. While at the product side, there are two hydrogen and one oxygen atom. Observe that the number of the oxygen atoms are not balanced. To balance the chemical equation, place an appropriate coefficient before the symbol or formula take note do not change the subscript of the formula as it will change the identity of the components in this chemical reaction let's try to add coefficient 2 to the product to balance the oxygen atom Remember that the coefficient multiplies to both hydrogen and oxygen in the product side. Now let's count and check if the number of atoms in the reactant and product are already balanced. In the reactant, there are two hydrogen and two oxygen atoms. In the product, we will multiply the coefficient to to the subscript of hydrogen which is 2 so the number of hydrogen atom in the product will be 4 and for the oxygen atom we will multiply the coefficient 2 to the number of oxygen atom which is 1 that give us a total of 2 oxygen in the product side look our attempt to balance the oxygen results to an unbalanced hydrogen, and so it needs to be rebalanced. Let's try to add coefficient 2 to hydrogen at the reactant side. Now, let's count and check if the equation is already balanced. In the reactant side, we multiply the coefficient 2 to the subscript of hydrogen atom. So, 2 times 2 equals 4 hydrogen atom. The number of oxygen in the reactant side is 2. While in the product side, there are 4 hydrogen and 2 oxygen atoms. So, is the equation balanced or not? Yes, the equation is already balance therefore the balance equation is two hydrogen will react to oxygen to form two 
water molecules. Very easy, right? Balancing chemical equation is a trial and error. Just like in life, we need to try and do not stop until we reach our goals. Now, can you help me to balance this equation? Great, I will give you one minute. Great job, learners! Now, let's see your answers. The balance equation now is we have four aluminum to be reacted with three oxygen to form two aluminum oxide. Very good, learners. At this moment, you are free to write your questions on the comment section. The teacher moderator will choose two questions that I will try to answer. You have 15 seconds to key in your questions on the comment section. All right. The teacher moderator has already chosen questions. So let me read the first question. Question number one. Why it is not allowed to change the subscript in balancing chemical equation? Okay. When balancing a chemical equation, it is not allowed to change the subscript because when you do it, you are actually changing the substance itself, which will make your chemical equations wrong number two why is it important to balance a chemical equation okay a balanced equation obeys the law of conservation of mass this is an important guiding principle in science it is important to balance a chemical equation to let us know the amount of reactants needed and the amount of products formed same with preparing a dish, it is important to know the exact measurement of the ingredients to get the desired taste of the product. Alright, I hope I have answered your question. And for those questions that were not chosen, don't you worry, it will be entertained by your subject teachers on the follow-up discussions tomorrow. Have you learned something today? If yes, <laughs> kindly hit the heart react. Again, this is Sir Ariel. Thank you for listening. Have a good day. Stay safe and God bless.